My name is Jonathan Lehman. I'm editorial director at Nine Marks. I'm an elder at Capitol Hill Baptist Church, and I have the opportunity to teach about the doctrine of the church in various seminaries uh, throughout the year. So I've written a book called Don't Fire Your Church Members, The Case for Congregationalism, and it's about the case for congregationalism. Jesus has put this authority, uh, this job, into the hands of church members. That the, the church members themselves are the ones who are to guard and protect the gospel. That Jesus has made every ordinary member of your church responsible for that. And, that. and we have that job, we have that privilege, we have that responsibility and that authority as church members to guard and protect the gospel and the gospel's ministry in the life of a congregation. When it comes to making decisions, the, uh, who, how, who, who do we receive as a member? Who do we put out as a member? Who are the elders? What does statement of faith say? Those kinds of decisions ultimately lie in the hands of the congregation, the gathered congregation themselves. Now they do that under the leadership of the elders. So the leaders come in and make recommendations to the congregation and say, we believe this is the way of biblical faithfulness on this matters. But finally, it falls to the congregation, the gathered congregation to make those kinds of decisions. People often don't pay much attention to the question of church polity or church government, but what's critical to realize is that church polity and church government uh, protect the what and the who of the gospel. That is, what we believe, the gospel, and who are we, the people of the gospel. And it's in uh, government, church government, those things are protected. Well, what that means is every single member is required to, to know the gospel to study the gospel, to understand the gospel's implications in people's lives so that they are capable of discriminating or discerning between uh, you know, the heretic or the hypocrite or to say, no, no, that's, that, that isn't keeping with the gospel. Well, think about what that requires. Well, that requires me to get involved and invested in other people's lives. So uh, church polity, church government, isn't just about decision making. For that decision making to work, uh, I, need, I need to do relationship building. So there's this dynamic between decision making and relationship building within the context of congregationalism that uh, allows me to protect the what and the who of the gospel, what do we believe, who are we, with integrity, right? What does it also require? Well, it also requires elders or pastors to do their job of shepherding me, equipping me to know the gospel. On the one hand, people say, how are you giving authority to the most immature members of the flock? Well, that's a good question. Well, in fact, what, what congregationalism calls for is elders and pastors to shepherd them towards maturity so that they do make good decisions. So if the elders aren't doing their job, pastors aren't doing their jobs, yeah, the, the congregation is, is gonna do a bad job as well. As a committed congregationalist, and as I argue in, in, in this book, uh, a natural question people will often have for me, well, what about the relationship between your church and other churches? And what about what Jesus says about unity? Doesn't an independent congregational church work against the unity that we see Jesus calling for, for instance, in uh, John 17 or Ephesians 4, these, these various unity texts. And the question I think you need to answer is, is he talking about a unity of faith or a unity of order? I think he's talking about a unity of faith and not a unity of order or structure, right? Uh, and inside of that unity of faith between my church and your church and other churches, Oh goodness, I, sh I should be praying for you. I should be uh, uh, reaching out to you. I should be building relationships with you. I should, if, if, if we're in proximity to one another, uh, maybe sending members to you if you know they live closer to your neighborhood. Uh, I think independent congregational churches, well, churches in general, I think, can get a little turfy, and that, that is not a New Testament attitude. Does that mean we need to be under a common order, a common authority? Not at all. I don't think you see that in the New Testament. There's no, no example of that other than an isolated apostolic situations. You, you don't see the common practice of a common authority over churches, but you do certainly see lots of partnering together. And I think increasingly that needs to characterize churches today of, of, of every denomination. Jesus intends to protect his gospel, right? and it's, it's the local church and its structures which protect the gospel from one generation to the next. Not only that, church government grows out of the gospel. 
So people often talk about how, well, you know, one context, you have one form of government, another context, another form of church government, that's fine. Well, what you're doing is, is you're cutting off, you're, you're failing to recognize that a, a proper biblical church government actually grows out of the gospel. And then that government, that form, that order, in turn, displays and protects the gospel. And you got this, this, this spiral. So the gospel creates a certain gospel order, and that gospel order in turn displays and protects the gospel. So why is, why is the topic of congregationalism and church government generally important? Because it's how we, we put on display and how we protect the gospel from one generation to the next. Um, not only that, church government, I think, it plays a crucial role. You might call it Jesus' discipleship program, right? He doesn't give us, you know, a discipleship in a box that we can buy on the sh uh, off the shelf. Instead, he gives us discipleship in his book. And what it is, is pastors and leaders uh, equipping, training the saints for the work of the ministry, the work of protecting their gospel life together and protecting each other and helping one another to remain faithful in the gospel. I think this is a message in our kind of individualistic, consumeristic, pragmatic age. Well, we tend not to pay attention to these matters, and I think they're important matters. Jesus thinks they're important matters for guarding and protecting the gospel.